Well, the time has come for part three of our 2007 Chevy Tahoe 5.3 liter engine swap. My hope is, my sincerest hope is, is that by the end of today, this truck can drive away. But we have a lot of things to cover before we get there. The engines are out, sitting side by side, waiting for any swaps that we need to go from one to the other. Uh, and I've also had some very good suggestions from some of you viewers out there. Thank you very much. Um, one of the suggestions was is to remove the intake manifold before installing the engine. And also, if you're going to do one of these jobs, possibly before you remove the engine. This will basically give you more room between the bulkhead and the engine itself, so it'll come out a little bit easier, and maybe you won't have to do something like drop the differential like I did. Either way, we're going to find out today if this thing goes back in and runs. So rather than taking up too much more of your time, I'm going to get to work, because I don't want this to take forever. Not like it did last time. I'm not going to let it get me. Don't let it get you. Don't let the machines beat you. You're the one with the tools, you're the one with the brains, they're just hunks of metal. And that's the way you treat them. They're hunks of metal, you are in control. You are their master. My hope is, is that this time, my confidence pays off and I prevail. Now some of you mentioned removing the transmission. Personally, I don't think this is a good idea, and, and for this reason. It's one more thing to take apart and one more thing to put back together. So if I just leave the whole thing intact, that's less for me to put together later. Uh, once I get that up in there, I have to get to all these different bell housing bolts. And that may not be so easy. Well, let me show you something that I found uh, taking this thing out. Now this is one of those times where I want to kick the butt of an engineer. <laughs> or of somebody who designed this. Check this out. They put the fastener for this exhaust right over the top of this. So the only way you can get this fastener off is with a wrench. Look. If you're up underneath the car, there's no way to get around that to get to that fastener to get anything on it but a wrench. I was really not happy about that. You could have moved it a little bit this way, a little bit this way, something. But instead, you put it right smack in front of the fastener there. Yeah, you could take the O2 sensor out, but why? Why? And yes, we will be using two cameras for the shoot again. You liked that, didn't you? I liked it. Did you like it? I know I liked it. Yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't it? Cool. As you can see, I've removed the intake, and I've just put the wiring harness here. It appears that uh, I had also bent the valve cover studs on this side, so I'm going to swap those studs with some of the other ones, but I thought I might show you what we got here. Um, it is a pushrod engine, as you can see, but uh, yeah, you ever see a brand new engine? You're looking at one. Ain't it pretty? But things are going pretty well. Um, wiring harness is the same. Took the alternator off. Now I'm going to see if I can find some way to uh, hook my chain up into the cylinder head or maybe back into this or something like that. Well, I'll let you know where I end up hooking it up, but this has saved me a lot of space. Um, so I'll, I'll have this much more clearance. Let's go look. Well, I'll have all this clearance, which is about a foot. So I'm real happy about that. Um, extremely light, it's just plastic. Time for an update. From the last one, you know I got the intake off. I was able to put my hook in back here on this, which was already there. Um, it might get a little bent, but I don't, I don't really think it's gonna be a problem at all. And then I hooked up here in the front on the tensioner pulley which uh, seems to be fine. Uh, as I said before, the valve cover did move a little bit, but all that was was the fasteners, so I just took the fasteners out of the old engine and switched them over. Uh, one thing that I'm kind of concerned about is there's supposed to be a gasket there. This gasket on the old one, and I don't know if I'll be able to take this gasket off, so I gotta see if I can track that down. But that's not going to stop me from putting the engine in. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have a little more room to play with now that uh, I've taken that intake off. So that was a good tip. Um, now I'm going to remove that AC compressor uh, that's on this. Now that I've got it up off the ground. I switched over this Y pipe. Um, I have no idea how you change cats on this truck with the engine in it. Uh, mainly because it. Uh, it hangs up on a uh, piece of the subframe down there. So if you ever had to change these cats out, that would be a real pain. So I'm using the brand new cats on this engine. 
uh, given that the old ones are, are old. But everything is up out of the way and doesn't look like any of these heater hoses or anything suffered any damage. It was just a little bit of this insulation that got pulled down was all that happened. But it's going to be fun to try to reach back here once the engine is in to install the fasteners for the intake manifold. But I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Uh, I've just been going over the engine and going over this just to make sure that once I get this in here, it's in here and I don't have to deal with it. You know, as we've learned so far, surprises come up and, uh, you know, just take a breath, take a mental cigarette and just think about it, work the problem and you will overcome it. Better it take a while than you screw something up and life really starts to suck. Ooh, one more thing I want to show you. Remember this little trick from the last time? Well, I'm going to do the same thing here and fill this oil filter up before I stick it on the truck. It is a brand new engine and I'm going to install this oil filter now. I almost feel bad about taking that brand new Delco off of there, but uh, I just want to make sure I start fresh. But I'm going to top off this oil filter because this engine, even though it's brand new, hasn't been running for a while. And I want to run it, uh, I want to make sure those bearings get oil as soon as possible. Okay, now you're going to be getting the same view as last time as I try to slip this thing down in here. So, let me know if uh, I'm hitting anything.
It's it! <laughs> now that we've overcome that obstacle, and we're both on both engine mounts, if I were to do this again, I might have uh, taken the power steering rack down because that line that sticks up, man, that was awfully close to the oil pan and it did tag it a little bit. I don't think it got damaged, it's just, it was really tight. But now that I'm back down on the mounts, I'm actually gonna break for lunch. Uh, taking this intake manifold off was huge. If you're gonna, if you're gonna take this engine out for clearance purposes, taking the intake manifold off makes all the difference. I still think you're gonna have to drop the differential and uh, if, if I'm to have a say, I'd say you should also drop the power steering rack down because uh, that will give you a lot more room and it should go in and out a lot easier. So I'd, had, I, had I dropped the power steering rack, which looks like those two big fasteners there, and then there's a couple more uh, up underneath that AC tensioner pulley to drop that down, um, I would advise that. That way it's just out of the way. But now that, uh, now that that's in, I'm going to go get myself some lunch, take a little break, and then go back to it. And it'll be done tonight. It'll run tonight. I have a good feeling. I'll see if I can find that gasket, though. That's my next thing. I want to see if that gasket will work. If not, i got to go get one. All right, to give you an update on the goings-on on this here Tahoe, I've been uh, working underneath. I like to put together the hard stuff first, and then I'm going to put together the top end. As you can see, i got the, uh, the intake still off. But I got the AC compressor on, the engine mounts are bolted in. Uh, not too much is really done up here. I've just uh, kind of got everything out of the way, uh, routed some of those cables, uh, that kind of thing. But underneath is where the real fun is going on. I managed to reinstall that ABS unit and get the fuel lines routed and reconnected. That's all done, and I'm actually about to fight with the transfer case here, which I'm not really excited about. I couldn't find a gasket for that. I'm just gonna use some of this stuff around the outside of it. Uh, I don't really like doing that. I'd rather have the gasket, but I need to seal it up and I can't get a gasket today. And I'm not gonna let that keep me from finishing it up. But I've also got the exhaust bolted up. I got the front differential bolted back up. Uh, things are moving along. I like how, like, this engine is brand new and this truck is four years old. It's kind of ironic. Now I'm gonna try to wrestle this transfer case back up in here. Have fun laughing at me. I'm not real excited about uh, hoisting this transfer case up in here, but it's probably gonna be the easiest way. I've got my fasteners, like, set out on the cardboard, ready to go as soon as I, uh, get it made it up but that uh, that's gonna be a challenge but I've made sure that this mating surface is dry same on the transfer case now I'm gonna apply the Honda bond and then I gotta get it up in there uh, let's just hope I don't die we're gonna squish a bit faster have a transmission jack.
to move it back because the drive shaft fell down. I was all excited there for a minute. Check back in with you in a bit. Okay, we got our drive shafts in, both front and back. We got our uh, transmission support, transmission mount, and now I'm filling the transfer case. Uh, thought uh, thought you might want to see how I did it, since this can be tricky. There's not a lot of space up in here, but there's just enough to fit these bottles transfer case fluid. I think this one's full. Yeah, it's full. But all I did was I took the top off of my uh, gear oil thing and just put it on, on this, snuck it up in there. And as you can see, I'm uh, topped off. Those are tapered so they don't go all the way in. but. That'll, uh, if you need to change the transfer case fluid, you just uh, take this one out to drain it, and take this one out to fill it. Simple as that. All right, that concludes the work underneath for the most part. I got a couple of O2 sensors to hook up, but I've got to put the intake manifold on first. So if you want to hang out while I do that. It's nice that it's plastic, it's all light. But it did make getting that engine in there a lot easier. I'm not tightening these down, I'm just running them snug for now. Really it's just a matter of hooking everything back up at this point. I'm very happy to be where I'm at. It's not too late yet. I know you're going to comment on the hair. Don't care. It's raining. This is about done. Want to check it out? Okay, all the goodies are back in. Put some power steering fluid in, put some oil in, put some transmission fluid in, put some coolant in. Put the core support in, got all this stuff together. Haven't put the front bumper or anything on yet. I'm gonna test it out. Put the steering back together. Hooked all the wires back up. I don't have any leftover connectors or anything like that. Batteries hooked up. So, moment of truth, people. Gonna just cycle the key a couple of times to get the fuel pump going. So nothing's leaking. Sounds like an engine. No lights. I have the parking brake on. See any leaks. So look up front. But there sounds like a new engine. Awesome. No leaks. 
No check engine lights. Nothing. We're gonna put this bad boy back together and roll this out of here. And remember, uh, when you're done with a big job like this, go through and make sure you put all your tools away so you're sure that you have them all. If not, uh, you might lose something. And that would suck. A few complications I'll go over with you now. I'm sorry I didn't take you on the trip, but it's getting pretty late at night and I just want to go home. The biggest obstacle was the shift cable uh, and it being held to the transmission. The car wouldn't, the truck wouldn't register that it was in park. So, uh, and that was because th there's no adjustment to the cable. So you can't move the cable one way or the other to get that to work. You can adjust the switch for, you know, the indicator and all that, but the transmission really needs to be physically in park. So I had to uh, modify the cable. Actually, modify the bracket the cable goes into in order to get that thing to uh, properly go into park. So I had to fight with that a bit. It had no transmission fluid in it whatsoever. So it took about... Uh, almost nine quarts. I don't know what they used to get the transmission fluid out of that thing, but they got it out. All of it. Engine runs great, but I hear very slight exhaust leaks, and I'm wondering if this is a gasket off the old manifold. I'm wondering if the new manifold had it on there. I didn't check. Uh, I thought the engine went in well, namely because of the little tip about taking the intake manifold off. Thank you very much. So if you're going to do this job, take the intake manifold off. It's a whole different world when you do. And you would be able to, if you're going to leave the transmission in, you'd be able to get the bell housing bolts a lot better, all that stuff. It's a good idea to do that. What else? Oh, power steering fluid was completely empty. I filled that up, but it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't engage until I rev the engine up. So, in other words, it wouldn't start circulating, so I rev the engine up, and finally it started circulating through. I had a very similar experience on the Hydro Boost van. I don't see any leaks. All the fluids are renewed. Um, transfer case, engine oil, everything. It's all, all new. That exhaust leak is very small. It might just be snug up a couple of fasteners, but I'm not doing that tonight. But I really do thank uh, all new and old subscribers. Uh, as of this video, I crossed over the 10,000 subscriber mark. I don't normally talk about that anymore, but you know, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, because I gotta say it's it's really cool. It's really cool to to have an idea, implement it, and then it actually work. That is awesome. That is the only word that I have for it. So thank you for for giving me that. I'm just sitting here talking, and I'm not sure. I got my phone in my. Ear. <laughs> Anywho, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at EricTheCarGuy.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, on Sundays, we do podcasts with me and Rich Baxter from CarTruckTalk.com. Sundays at noon, Eastern Standard Time. You can uh, find that at the player at the bottom of my homepage uh, and follow things there. Also remember that Eric the Car Guy has full-length videos for sale at the uh, Fix-It page. That's the last page on the website. Got two of them up for you now. I'm working on others, including the Civic Engine that I'm about to do. Anyway. Eric the car guy, reminding you, stay dirty. Yeah, it's like he's on this game. They used to call me Sled Dog. Kind of fits, I guess. Name a dog. I don't need my own peep, though. See ya.